Today we're going to be doing a video of a Cougar. Um, this one made in particular is a 357 UMR. We've got a cable system on this slot. Not a whole lot of maintenance on this one, but we'll show you how to get it in and out if something fails on it from the inside when we get in there. Uh, you want to make sure on every one of these slides, keep all these rubbers, spray them down with conditioner. Across the top, you don't even have to wipe them. It'll come out in the foam, if you don't hear it, it makes no difference. It'll dry up, you'll never know the difference. Just spray it, let it soak in. It's important to do that. Helps the slide run in and out, number one. Number two, these get dried out. They're gonna crack, you're gonna start leaking. I'll do mine about once a month. This is your storage. This receptacle is an inverted receptacle. Um, runs off your solar and it's also a GFI. These are hookups for your TV, satellite or cable, if the campground offers cable or it also runs off your antenna. These lights, uh, on the bottom here, you'll have to see uh, two slashes on the switch. That's gonna be motion. Middle's off. Single slash is on permanently. This is the brains of your end command. These are all your relays and everything which runs with it. You'll run everything from up front. If anything ever fails on that panel, you can come in here to the switches and you can it'll be selective to slides or on air or whatever and you can put it to your right setting and manually run them in and out right here. You also have a battery right here, a little watch battery. You probably ought to change that about once a year. You also have fuses in here to look at. They're just inline fuses. This is your LP system. Up on top here, you have an arm. This arm will rotate back and forth. So if I follow this arm right now and you follow your line down, you're pulling off of this tank. If this tank gets empty, all you're gonna do is shut it off, rotate this arm to the other side. Now you're pulling off of your other tank. Shut this one down, unhook it, turn your other one on, and you can go get this filled at that point. Battery disconnect. Um, this one's set up for two separate batteries on it because you've probably got a battery operated refrigerator. You have a light up here. You also have these lights up here for your cap lights and your docking lights. And they just flip on and off. The other side of your tank. Okay, now in here, and it's kind of hard to see, this is your level up system. You're just going to turn it on. I'm going to give you the basics on it. Anything gives you step by step right here. And that gets you going on everything. Don't be afraid of it. If you do something wrong, it's going to be scroll across this screen. It's probably gonna say a board of something of that nature. Keep watching that screen. It's gonna follow up behind and tell you exactly what to do to correct the situation. In this position right here, all I've got to do is hit front and it's gonna raise my camper up. I hit retract button and hit front, it's gonna lower your camper. And as you scroll through, here's your scroll buttons. Now drop front jacks, enter to begin. Now if I hit enter, those front jacks are coming down. If your truck or something's underneath there, it's coming down on it. So make sure you're clear when you do that. Auto reconnect. If you're set up camping, when you get ready to tear down, all you're gonna do is come in here to this auto reconnect, 
hit enter, your rear jacks are all gonna come up and your front jacks are gonna set this exactly where you left this and dropped it off at. And here's your manual mode. If I hit enter right now, now I can control each individual jack however I wanna control it, just by hitting right, right rear, left rear, however I wanna hit it, whatever I wanna do, I can manually level this all completely by itself just by going right there. Now back to our ready jacks down position. If I hit auto level right now, this is gonna auto level completely by itself with some exceptions. If you go to this front jack, you only have so much stroke. This runs up and down this top part right here. So you always wanna leave plenty of play on here. You don't wanna bottom this out or get it up too high because if you have to lift this or move it, it won't move. You're bottomed out. You're gonna end up calling a record to get you up. So always leave at least a minimum of six inches in their play to be able to run that. Once you get these down, you're just gonna pull your pin right here and that's gonna drop in bottom legs to leave you plenty of play for this to level. If you're on an extreme incline, you're gonna stroke out on that because there's not enough play in it to go. So you have to semi eyeball level these before you hit that auto level or they will stroke out and you won't level up on it. <clears throat> Same thing in your rear jacks. <clears throat> if you're in a hole with those rear jacks and they're coming down, it's gonna stroke out, it's not gonna get there. So you have to get it up. Same way, just semi eyeball level it all the way around. And like I said, if anything ever, just look right here and this is gonna walk you right through everything. That battery disconnect up there was for your unit. This one is for your inverter. This takes your inverter down, takes it on and off if you wanna shut it off. And all you do is just switch it. Now I just shut it off. Now I'm back on with it. Remember this hose as we go around. That's a quick connect right there. This one right here, you can put a knock garden nozzle on, or we'll show you how to operate that as we go through the camp. Okay, that hose I just showed you, right here is where you're gonna go in with your quick connect. It just snaps in, turns, locks in. Hot and cold running water. The other end with a screw in, nozzle, or you come right down here to your black tank flush. If you're hooked up and have water, you're gonna tie it right into here, turn it on, and that's gonna flush your black tank out. Anytime you, or you can also use a garden hose in there and flush it. Anytime you do that, make sure that this black valve is open. It's important to do that. That tank will fill up surprisingly fast on you. If it does, it's got nowhere to go but your floor, or if you got a good tight seal on your toilet, it's gonna to shoot straight out your roof vent. So make certain on that. When you winterize this, once you get good antifreeze coming out of here, tie in back into your black tank and push some antifreeze through there. There's a breaker valve back behind there and you have to get that valve cleared. Don't take a lot, but it takes, you gotta get that valve cleared. This is where you're gonna winterize from right here. These are all your bypasses. This is a bypass for your hot water heater on and off. You've got to have this bypass on or when you start pushing antifreeze, it's all gonna run out your hot water heater. Same way here, you'll flip this to winterize on. Now you're winterizing. When you de-winterize, you'll go just the opposite on everything and open everything up. When you de-winterize, don't take the bypass off of your hot water heater until you've already flushed all your lines out. Otherwise, you're gonna run all your antifreeze into your hot water heater. This is your city water connection. Make sure you run a water regulator. It's important to do that. If you hit a high pressure hydrant, these are all PEX fittings, you're gonna leak. Um, and then put your filter on it, because most of them's well, everything will be orange if you don't. If you wanna put a 90 on this, it actually helps out and takes some of the pressure off of these. 
once you get done and you everything's winterized, shut your pump down, take all the pressure off, that little white dot in there, you're gonna push on that. When you push on that, the water's gonna come right like that and then it's gonna turn good and pink with your antifreeze. You just winterize that backflow valve. Anytime you start camping, make sure, double check, make sure all these valves are in. If you don't and you leave this valve open, when you pop that cap to dump, it's gonna get ugly real quick. So those have to be in. This is your key TV. This blue line right here comes from your roof. It's a gallery of pre-connect, pre-wired, if you wanna put a satellite on your roof. All you do is tie it in like it's tied in right now. Um, if you wanna put one on the ground, you'll just take this off, run your cable here, and just hook it into here. Feed your camper, the entire camper. This is if the campground offers cable, and you'll tie in right here. This is just hook up for a solar. And basically all it does is puts a trickle charge on your battery. You've got the same motion light up inside here. Same thing, two slashes, motion, middle off, one slash is on permanently. This is your fresh water fill. What you're gonna do, and don't forget to sanitize it. You're gonna to need to sanitize it before you use it. You're just gonna put some bleach in there or some chemical you can put in there, fill it up, let it soak, drain it, flush it real good. When you go to drain it, here's your drain for it right here. And it just pushes in and out. hot water heater, and this is your furnace. I'm gonna make sure you get mud dauber screens on these. For whatever reason, mud daubers are attracted to propane. They'll go in there and build those mud tubes and it will shut everything down on you and create all kinds of problems. And there's a start of one right there. This is your anode rod and also your plug for your water heater. It just goes in right here and screws in um, those, and you will want to keep an eye on that because those will de de decay. They are made of magnesium. It's a weak metal, so everything attacks it instead of attacking your tank or rusting your tank out. Anytime you change this out, go ahead and leave the anode rod out for a little bit, run water, flush your tank out real good. Once you've done that, shut your water off, you're ready to reinsert your anode rod. Make sure you always Teflon tape this first because it'll rust up in there and create you all kinds of problems once again. Anytime you fill this, and as soon as you put water to it, as long as your bypass is off, it's gonna start filling. You wanna open up your pressure relief valve and let the air out as it fills so it doesn't expand your tank and rupture it. Once the water starts trickling, shut it down. Now you're good, turn everything on. And we'll show you all the operation on the inside for this on all your switches there. Okay, now this slide's a little different. This is a geared slide. Um, this is your actuator for it right here, which runs it, the motor's on the other side. If anything ever fails on these, you go to the motor on the opposite side of it, and you can manually run these in and out so you don't get stuck out somewhere. This whole square tube, the gear underneath, all the way back in the frame, you wanna keep these sprayed down with uh, dry lube. Don't ever use a lithium grease or something like that. It will collect everything and gum these up and create you all kinds of problems. Um, and there's, you've got one at the other end too that you're gonna have to do. So it's important to keep those done. These are your low point drains back here. This one, this one's different. This one's a Swintec system. 
on these Swintec systems, when you run these in and out, there's a motor up on each side, on both sides. When you run this out, once it's out all the way, you wanna hold that button and count to 10. Same way coming in. It keeps those motors synchronized to keep them running together so this doesn't wanna cock on you. When you're out walking around your camper, when you're camping, just killing time, go through it all, look at all these seams in here, up above, look for any little cracks down below. It's important that you seal down below, the water will run down and seep into your floor. Look, if you start seeing cracks in them, get your little alcohol, wash it real good, take a real fine bead of silicone, Put it across there, run your finger back, seal it, same way underneath, around everything here. If you need a little bitty crack, we'll allow the water to come in and, and deteriorate your camper. Okay. This model has two bathrooms, so not only do you have your dump up there, your dump up there is your black for your um, main bath, and then it's also the shower dump. These back here, this is gonna be your dumps. This one's probably going to be your galley, and this is going to be your black. Now on these, the black tank is tied into the sh uh, shower a lot of time. They tie these together, um, so keep an eye on that and see how they, they have run that situation. You got a 50 amp service, and this is just a twist cord that ties in and out. Whenever you hook these up, flip your breaker off. When you unplug, flip it off when you plug in then flip your breaker back on. That way you don't get any arcing on it. That little black cap you see up on top there is a hookup pre-wired for a backup camera if you ever choose to put a backup camera on it. Thing you need to know about that, that picks up power off of your running lights. Your running lights have to be on. Uh, if you have auto switch on your running lights, it won't run off auto. Make sure you manually have them on. That's where it picks up power for them. Okay, this is your in command system. All we're gonna do is turn this on. You have a main switch right here for your interior lights. I can take them all down just with it or turn them on just by pushing that one as soon as I come in here. All the others are gonna be on separate switches. We'll go through that as we go around. Here's your water heater, gas or electric, or if you're showering back to back, run them both together, your recuperation time's a lot faster. You push the back arrow, it brings you back to start. Here's your water pump. You'll only run that on potable water. You won't need it on city water. It'll just be potable water or when you winterize. These are your tank readings for all your tanks. Now, when these tanks fill, that's going to change color. And it's going to let you know where you're at. There's four probes in each one of those tanks. A ground, a third, two thirds, and full. As that fills up, it's going to cause it to short up, and that's what changes these colors. So that's going to come in importance when we get in the bathroom on maintenance on them. So now to get into everything on here, all I'm going to do right now is push zero, 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 zero. Now this gets me into my HVAC and everything. And this one does have a front air, so... There's my front, here's my rear. Now my rear is where my heat, uh, my heat's gonna come from. So in this, all I'm gonna do is push my mode button. There's my fans if I wanna run my fans. My air conditioner, your temperature settings come right here. And then there's where my heat, everything runs right here. Now this vent right here, runs that front vent up there in the ceiling. That's where you operate it from. Push open and then your fan on, low, high, medium, however you wanna run it. Now we got it off and we're gonna close our vent. Whenever you're running, particularly your AC on these, If you ever see a minus right here on these, if you forget to shut your air conditioner off and unplug this, you will have to hard start it. 
which means, or if you shut your computer down, which means you're going to disconnect your batteries and you're going to unplug this from the wall. Let it set a minute. Plug everything back in. It's just like uh, rebooting your computer is basically all this. And then you'll get your temperatures back up there. And if you ever see a minus right here, hard starter. And that's what the problem is. Now here's your lights. I can control each one individually. Your awning lights, that's those LEDs, strip lights up above there. Or if you get hit your main light and you want to shut them off, now I'm just shutting the bedroom lights off. And back on. These are my slides and awnings. This is where I'm going to run everything from right here. Um, we're going to go over the slides at the very last because we're going to run out of room if I put them in right now. But all you're going to do is hit in and out. And I can't stress enough on that bed slide. That's that Swintech system. When you run it all the way out or run it all the way in, continue to hold that button and count to 10. Every single one of these, if you let off of that, it's gonna stop automatically. So you have to continue to hold it. And then here's your awnings in and out. In this one settings, I can program this into my phone and run everything off of it, reset my passcodes, Anything you want to do, you can come right in here, edit it, and do whatever you want. Set your camper up however you want to set it up. Now, on this one here, this is what I was talking about. If I power off on this right now with my air conditioner running, it's going to shut that down. I'm going to have to reboot it. So that's what you don't want to do. Make sure your air conditioner is off before you do that. If I power off, it's gonna bring up something different. So it'll have to reboot itself also. Or you just go here. That's not gonna cooperate, there we go. You just bring it back. Now all I gotta do is shut it here and it's gonna bring come on in that ready mode. These switches right here, this one's your decorative lights over your cabinets. This one's over your sink. Your radio, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I don't know what they did with the remotes in it. Um, you'll have remotes for it. Basically, the biggest thing you want to know on this is right here, This is where you're going to set your, just wherever you want it. These are your zones. So with this running right now, zone one, those are your inside speakers. Zone two are your outside speakers, or you can run them both. That's a DVD, a CD, it does it all. You can play it through your speakers. Thing you want to watch on that is whatever you're watching in here if you're playing through your speakers if zone two is on which is your outside speakers and everybody knows what you're watching out there so make sure you get zone two off in order to program this you're going to go to input and it's going to come up tv that's where you want to be push input then you're going to go to menu and <clears throat> you'll scroll over and find your hookups and it's going to ask you TV or cable you want to make sure you're on your TV and push OK and it will go through and automatically program everything that in that area on your fireplace just going to turn it on with that switch right there or if anything ever fails on this you've got manual controls right here if i go to that flame it changes your colors you set it wherever you want it the little squiggly lines 
it turns your fireplace on, sets your temperatures. You adjust your temperatures right there on the bottom. That light right there, it's a clock, it's a timer. You can set your timer on it. Get in the habit of looking up here at your microwave when you come in. This is AC, AC only. All these lights are all DC. This is the fastest way to tell if you've got power to your unit or not. If this is blank, go start looking. You're running strictly off your battery. <clears throat> On these, we don't have LP in our tanks right now, but all you've got to do is turn this right now. If I turn it to my flame and click it, if we had LP on, we'd be getting right to how we're going to light it. You see how that turned red? So if you walk in, you don't have flame, but this is red. I'm bleeding LP into my unit right now. And make sure you turn it off. You'll light the same way. You'll light your oven by going to this one. Once it lights, using this right here, once it lights, you're going to continue to hold it for a minute. Just turn it to your desired temperature, you're good to go. Up on this is your light for your lights here. Middle's off position. Down is your oven light. This is your converter. This is all your AC power, all your DC power. If you just happen to blow one of these fuses, you'll see a little light come on the side and it's going to let you know what fuse it is. Your LP detectors located over here on the side. The LP is heavier than the mirror. It hugs your grand. That's why it's mounted so low. Um, this is your light for around your island. That's the switch there. Your refrigerator. This screws in right here and holds it. And all your controls are right here on your face. You've got a hook up in here for washer and dryer. Even if you don't put it in, don't forget, you have to winterize that. It's still going to have residual. The easiest way to do that is take your first empty jug, stick it up on that spigot, run it in the jug so you don't have to run hose all the way in and out. You will see these periodically throughout your camper. Since you don't have a thermostat, everything's run by the computer that picks up your temperatures, communicating with it, letting it know where you're at. And then you've got switches throughout separately on these. Hook up for a phone, charge your phone. Um, don't forget winterizing your faucets and everything. And when you do that, you'll go to the furthest point. So when you winterize, that's going to be the first one you're pushing the antifreeze through and work your way back towards your port, your inlet port. This light underneath here is a little push button. It's just located right in the middle. These lights are, there we go, it's on and off, or they're also on a dimmer. your closet space anytime you travel make sure that you are clicked into these and they've got these reversed 
make sure you are clicked in and locked in because these doors are going to roll and when they do they're going to shatter on you these lights are just a little push button up here and you've got storage under your bed If you put another mattress on this, a residential mattress is six inches longer, this thing's going to come up all the way up against this. Make sure you may have to lift it up on top of your dresser when you put that in if you do that. This little guy right here holds your shower doors. Now you look like you're in right now, you're not. Make sure those click or that'll pop off and you will shatter your shower doors. This is a shut off on your shower. Right here, it shuts it on and off. You gotta learn to take military showers. Um, otherwise you're gonna fill your tanks up and then you gotta dump, set back up and then it's not fun. Get wet, shut it off. Soap up, rinse off as fast as you can, and shut her down, conserve your water. When you winterize, every single one of these faucets, after you get through winterizing, open them all up. After you're done, open them all up. Antifreeze still slushes. By opening them up, if it does slush, it takes all pressure off all these faucets. That's going to be the first thing to go on them. So just open everything up afterwards. And here's your GFI. Okay, as soon as you dump, it's all about those probes, taking care of those probes inside those tanks. As soon as you dump in here, you want to come right back in, put chemical and a couple of gallons of water right back in, because even after you dump, you're going to have some residual. Um, if you're traveling, it doesn't hurt to put some ice down there. It slushes, sloshes around in there and helps break everything up, keep everything clean. Um, Remember that chemical is only good for seven days, so if you don't go out for a while, you'll have to retreat it. If you go somewhere with a direct hook up on a sewer, you can hook up to that sewer, but do not open these drains up. Use these tanks. It's important that you do that. Water is your best friend in these tanks. Um, if you try to open that up and go direct, all the solids are going to sit on the bottom, liquids will flow out, and you will literally build a big stinky brick. Next time you do that, it's going to pyramid on you. And it's going to keep going. And the only way to fix that is to take your tanks out and put new tanks in. So it's going to get expensive. These don't have traps in them. You have to leave water on top of them. That is your trap. Even when you're traveling, so there's a little bit of water in there right now. You want a little bit of water in it right now. Just keep that black gasket moist. If that gasket dries out, it'll quit holding water. If that ever happens to you, Get your rubber glove, a jar of Vaseline, go down and grease it up. Nine times out of ten, it'll come right back to life for you. Um, when you wash this, wash it right before you get ready to dump it. The uh, cleaning chemical will kill your enzymes and digesters and everything inside of this. Um, never, ever, ever use regular toilet paper in these. It'll plug them up so quick, you're not going to be happy with yourself if you do. Make sure you use the RV toilet paper. Um, got that. Oh, if you use the bag chemical, and I'm telling you this from experience, if you use the bag chemical, cut the bag, dump it, throw that bag away. They don't always dissolve, and they'll get hooked on those probes and give you false readings. So just cut the bag, dump it, throw that bag away. Um, <clears throat> keep an eye on your, there's a sight glass on the end of your dump tube. Sounds kind of nasty, but it pays off. Keep an eye on that when you're dumping. It's going to tell you a lot about what your tanks are doing. Hey, I'm dang kind of slow. I may have a problem. I may need to jet this out. I may need to rinse it real good or something. But you can catch it ahead of time before you run into a big problem with it. Okay. 
And here's your lights in here. This one is just a switch up here for your fan, and you just rotate this and it opens up your vent. I think we've covered everything.